Good morning, everyone. And as previously announced our, or posted in our weekly plan yesterday, our lesson for today is on the basics of legal philosophy. So what do you expect in this lesson? Um, first, we will ha um, define legal philosophy and we will answer the question if do we really need to study this subject um, in law school? And also we will be or I will be discussing the four major theories um, in legal philosophy and in the later part of the lesson I will be giving you quick and easy steps to have better understanding or have better interest in the study of legal philosophy especially those students this is really applicable to those students who did not graduate like Paul's or who's um, undergraduate study is not related to philosophy, political science, or um, anything that has to do with the study of government. So let's begin with our first um, question. What is the definition of legal philosophy? Actually, to me, this is the most basic or simple definition of legal philosophy I found and it is the analytical and normative study of law and legal concept. What's the meaning of this? The study of law is standardized, like it's an analysis, like in any other science or um, area of study. So the study of law is not just like doing it aimlessly or like there should be a step by step, like there's a reason behind it, there's a process and you will be um, the di um, discovering the process because later on I will be giving you the, the three dimensions of legal reasoning now jurisprudence legal theory and legal philosophy or philosophy of law these four um, words or phrases are interchangeably used in literature um, juris um, legal authorities are using this interchangeably such that you should not be confusing yourself just think that they mean one and the same okay to make uh, to, s to make it simpler now why do we need to study um, legal philosophy I found these three reasons and of course the fir um, for the first two reasons it's more of the practicality of it or in the application especially that if you're still studying law I would understand that your appreciation of these reasons these first two reasons will be limited because as you can see in our um, slide that it's more of the legal institutions and the legal or the practice of law and you would have um, better exposure if you or unless um, you are studying in or you are working in government or you are working in a law office or you were involved in a case maybe that's um, your appreciation would be um, in-depth compared to those purely st um, students now I purposely included um, the third reason because you will indeed have a better understanding of law and its legal or its provisions if you know the philosophy behind the enactment of a law philosophy philosophy by itself means the reason behind the law and legal philosophy will give you the why behind the law and this is not just a product of a one night study uh, by our legal philosophers but it has been a product of civilization from the earliest f legal philosopher up to the contemporaries or the the more or recent um, political or legal theories now legal philosophy it tries to answer these questions why do you have law if we say why do uh, we have um, the law it also tells you what is the reason behind the law and aside from this if we go to the next um, level of understanding what makes the law valid and binding because when you say that the law is valid and binding it affects individuals and also what this is very common especially in constitutional law what is the basis and breadth of um, 
of governmental power and jurisdiction in relation to private rights and freedoms, meaning the private individual um, in comparison to the government. And you have to explore these things and you will be um, ex uh, familiarizing with this, the, the reason, the validity, what makes it binding, um, the authority and the people affected by the application of the law. Now, these are the four major theories of law and in time we will be addressing or discussing them. Now, before we take our break, I would just want to discuss the first major legal theory and that is legal positivism. And in its simple expression, legal positivism tells you that the law is basically a command of the sovereign and you cannot question the reason or the why behind the law because the, the you are focused on the authority since it is given by the sovereign it is given by the monarch it is given by the government it is given by congress all you have to do is to follow it and there is no need for you to question whether it's valid whether it's useful whether it's in, a, in an abuse of power because it focuses on the authority of the commanding um, person per se now to a positivist you cannot question the justness of the law because the positivist treatment is that if you're going to question the justness of the law then it becomes an extra legal affair so it goes beyond the provisions of the law now it was thomas uh, thomas aquinas who put the phrase positive law into wide circulation and we know that he's a political and legal theorist and authority in this field now so after this one we will just take our short break and i will be seeing you and hope you learned something in this very quick um, part of the lesson thank you so much and we look forward again in um, this um, in the second part. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye for now.